Emerging markets An emerging market is a country that has some characteristics of a developed market but is not a developed market. This includes countries that may be developed markets in the future or were in the past. It may be a nation with social or business activity in the process of rapid growth and industrialization. The economies of China and India are considered to be the largest. According to The Economist, many people find the term outdated, but no new term has gained traction. Emerging market hedge fund capital reached a record new level in the first quarter of 2011 of $121 billion. The four largest emerging and developing economies by either nominal or inflation-adjusted GDP are the BRIC countries. Your next four largest markets are MIKT, although South Korea is not considered as an emerging market by some sources. Iran is also considered as an emerging market. The ASEAN China Free Trade Area, launched on January 1, 2010, is the largest regional emerging market in the world. Terminology In the 1970s, less developed countries, LDCs, was the common term for markets that were less developed, by objective or subjective measures, than the developed countries such as the United States, Western Europe, and Japan. These markets were supposed to provide greater potential for profit, but also more risk from various factors. This term was thought by some to be politically incorrect so the emerging market label was created. The term is misleading in that there is no guarantee that a country will move from less developed to more developed. Although that is the general trend in the world, countries can also move from more developed to less developed. Originally brought into fashion in the 1980s by then World Bank economist Antoine Van Agtmael, the term is sometimes loosely used as a replacement for emerging economies, but really signifies a business phenomenon that is not fully described by all constrained to geography or economic strength. Such countries are considered to be in a transitional phase between developing and developed status. Examples of emerging markets include Indonesia, Iran, some countries of Latin America, some countries in Southeast Asia, South Korea, most countries in Eastern Europe, Russia, some countries in the Middle East, and parts of Africa. Emphasizing the fluid nature of the category, political scientist Ian Bremer defines an emerging market as a country where politics matters at least as much as economics to the markets. The research on emerging markets is diffused within management literature. While researchers including, George Haley, Vladimir Kvint, Hernando de Soto, Usher Haley, and several professors from Harvard Business School and Yale School of Management have described activity in countries such as India and China, how a market emerges is little understood. In 1999, Dr. Kvint published this definition, Emerging market country is a society transitioning from a dictatorship to a free market-oriented economy, with increasing economic freedom, gradual integration with the global marketplace and with other members of the GEM, global emerging market, an expanding middle class, improving standards of living, social stability and tolerance, as well as an increase in cooperation with multilateral institutions in 2008 Emerging Economy Report. The Center for Knowledge Societies defines emerging economies as those regions of the world that are experiencing rapid informationalization under conditions of limited or partial industrialization. It appears that emerging markets lie at the intersection of non-traditional user behavior, the rise of new user groups and community adoption of products and services, and innovations in product technologies and platforms. More critical scholars have also studied key emerging markets like Mexico and Turkey. Thomas Maroy, 2012, 2, argues that financial imperatives have become much more significant and has developed the idea of emerging finance capitalism an era wherein the collective interests of financial capital principally shape the logical options and choices of government and state elites over and above those of labor and popular classes. Julian Vacuiel recently proposed a pragmatic definition of the emerging economies, as distinguished from emerging markets coined by an approach heavily influenced by financial criteria. According to his definition, an emerging economy displays the following characteristics. 1. Intermediate income, 
its PPP per capita income is comprised between 10% and 75% of the average EU per capita income. 2. Catching up growth, during at least the last decade, it has experienced a brisk economic growth that has narrowed the income gap with advanced economies. 3. Institutional transformations and economic opening, during the same period, it has undertaken profound institutional transformations which contributed to integrate it more deeply into the world economy. Hence, emerging economies appears to be a byproduct of the current globalization. At the beginning of the 2010s, more than 50 countries, representing 60% of the world's population and 45% of its GDP, matched these criteria. Among them, the BRICS. The term rapidly developing economies is being used to denote emerging markets such as the United Arab Emirates, Chile and Malaysia that are undergoing rapid growth. In recent years, new terms have emerged to describe the largest developing countries such as BRIC that stands for Brazil, Russia, India, and China, along with BRICIT, BRIC plus Eastern Europe and Turkey, BRICS, BRIC plus South Africa, BRICM, BRIC plus Mexico, BRIC, BRIC plus South Korea, Next 11, Bangladesh, Egypt, Indonesia, Iran, Mexico, Nigeria, Pakistan, Philippines, South Korea, Turkey, and Vietnam, and Civits, Colombia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Egypt, Turkey and South Africa. These countries do not share any common agenda, but some experts believe that they are enjoying an increasing role in the world economy and on political platforms. It is difficult to make an exact list of emerging, or developed, markets. The best guides tend to be investment information sources like ISI Emerging Markets and The Economist or market index makers, such as Morgan Stanley Capital International. These sources are well informed, but the nature of investment information sources leads to two potential problems. One is an element of historicity. Markets may be maintained in an index for continuity, even if the countries have since developed past the emerging market phase. Possible examples of this are South Korea and Taiwan. A second is the simplification inherent in making an index. Small countries, or countries with limited market liquidity are often not considered, with their larger neighbors considered an appropriate stand-in. In an Opalesque TV video, hedge fund manager Jonathan Binder discusses the current and future relevance of the term emerging markets in the financial world. Binder says that in the future investors will not necessarily think of the traditional classifications of G10, or G7, versus emerging markets. Instead, people should look at the world as countries that are fiscally responsible and countries that are not. Whether that country is in Europe or in South America should make no difference making the traditional blocks of categorization irrelevant. The big emerging market, BEM, economies are, alphabetically ordered, Brazil, China, Egypt, India, Indonesia, Mexico, Philippines, Poland, Russia, South Africa, South Korea and Turkey. Newly industrialized countries are emerging markets whose economies have not yet reached first world status but have, in a macroeconomic sense, outpace their developing counterparts. Individual investors can invest in emerging markets by buying into emerging markets or global funds. If they want to pick single stocks or make their own bets they can do it either through ADRs, American Depositor Receipts, stocks of foreign companies that trade on U.S. stock exchanges, or through exchange-traded funds, exchange-traded funds or ETFs hold basket of stocks. The exchange-traded funds can be focused on a particular country, for example, China, India, or region, for example, Asia-Pacific, Latin America. International Monetary Fund List As of July 16, 2012, the International Monetary Fund, IMF, labels the following countries as emerging economies. One also included in the group of advanced economies by the IMF. Columbia University EMGP List As of April 1, 2013, the Emerging Market Global Players, EMGP, 
project at Columbia University includes the following economies into the watch list. The EMGP project, a collaborative effort led by the Vail Columbia Center, VCC, brings together researchers on FDI from leading institutions in emerging markets to produce annual reports identifying the top multinationals from each of a number of emerging markets. Each report is posted on this website as well as on the website of the partner institution in the relevant country. The information in the reports, including the rankings by foreign assets, will be of interest to researchers, bankers, investors, and the media, as well as to multinational firms in many countries. FTSE List the FTSE group distinguishes between advanced and secondary emerging markets on the basis of their national income and the development of their market infrastructure. The advanced emerging markets are classified as such because they are upper or lower middle income GNI countries with advanced market infrastructures or high income GNI countries with lesser developed market infrastructures. The advanced emerging markets are The secondary emerging markets include some low income lower middle, upper middle and high income GNI countries with reasonable markets infrastructures and significant size and some upper middle income GNI countries with lesser developed market infrastructures. The secondary emerging markets are MSCI list As of November 2013, MSCI classified the following 21 countries as emerging markets. In 2013, Greece was added and Morocco was removed. The following countries are currently under review for a reclassification to developed market, with conclusions being announced in June 2014. South Korea, Taiwan. The list tracked by The Economist is the same, except with Hong Kong, Singapore and Saudi Arabia included, MSCI classifies the first two as developed markets and the third one is unclassified due to foreign ownership restrictions. S&P list As of December 31, 2010, Standard & Poor's classified the following 20 countries as emerging markets. The United Arab Emirates, Qatar, and Jordan are currently under review for being upgraded to the status of emerging market by S&P. Greece is under review for being demoted to becoming an emerging market effective on September 2014. Dow Jones list as of September 2011, Dow Jones classified the following 20 countries as emerging markets. The following country is currently under Dow Jones watch list for a reclassification to emerging market. Greece. The following countries are currently under Dow Jones watch list for a reclassification to developed market. South Korea, Taiwan. Frontier Strategy Group F10 list. In July 2011, Frontier Strategy Group released the F10, a list of the top 10 emerging markets Western multinational senior executives at Fortune 500 companies are tracking globally. The F10 emerging market list is as follows. China, Brazil, India, Mexico, Russia, Indonesia, Colombia, Argentina, Chile, Turkey. BBVA Research in November 2010, BBVA Research introduced a new economic concept, to identify key emerging markets. This classification is divided in two set of developing economies. Eagles, emerging and growth leading economies, expected incremental GDP in the next 10 years to be larger than the average of the G7 economies, excluding the US. NEST expected incremental GDP in the next decade to be lower than the average of the G6 economies, G7 excluding the US, but higher than Italy's. Other Emerging Markets Emerging Markets Index The Emerging Markets Index is a list of the top 65 cities in emerging markets. The following countries had cities featured on the list, as of 2008. Summary list If we organize the lists above into the following table, a few countries appear on every list, BRICS plus Next11, FTSE, MSCI, The Economist, S&P, Dow Jones, Columbia University EMGP. 
Indonesia and Turkey are categorized with Mexico and Korea as part of the MIKT economies. Egypt, since January 25, 2011, has been affected by protests and is now in a transitional period. Several countries also only appear on one list. These are Iran, next 11. Israel, Columbia University EMGP. Hong Kong, Singapore, and Saudi Arabia, The Economist. And Sudan, Tunisia, Ukraine, and Venezuela, BBVA. Global Growth Generators Global Growth Generators, or 3G, countries, is an alternative classification determined by Citigroup analysts as being countries with the most promising growth prospects for 2010 to 2050. These consist of Indonesia, Egypt, seven other emerging countries, and two countries not previously listed before, specifically Iraq and Mongolia. There has been disagreement about the reclassification of these countries, among others, for the purpose of acronym creation as was seen with the BRICS. Six Major Emerging Economies According to World Bank issued at May 2011, BRIC countries plus South Korea and Indonesia will lead the world's economy with more than a half of all global growth by 2025. Neo Emerging Economies In early 2014, CoFace, a French credit body, said that BRICS is slowdown in 10 neo emerging economies' growth at least 4% a year a diversified economy without undue dependence on the sale of raw materials, and some capacity to absorb economic shocks and have to be matched by a financial system capable of supporting investment, but without raising risks of overheating. The ten new emerging economies broke into two groups. PPICS comprises Peru, Philippines, Indonesia, Colombia and Sri Lanka with sound business environment. The second comprises Kenya, Tanzania, Zambia, Bangladesh and Ethiopia with unsound business environment as same condition with BRIC at 2001. Compared to BRIC, S, in 2001 and current 10 neo-emerging economies, the latest are better with 2.8% lower of BRIC 2001 inflation rate and only 40% of PUBLC debt ratio for the neo-10 and 54% for the BRICS at 2001.